a very good afternoon today i'm going to talk to you about the sacral plexus or even the it's called the sacred plexus medical students worldwide are not taught about this in detail probably they are too sacred to be taught now is the season of sacred games we pretty well ought to know about sacred plexus also because these nerves are very interesting nerves they are situated in the pelvis they are in charge of the entire innervation of the pelvis as well as the gluteal region the back of the thigh and the entire leg the sacral plexus is formed by the lumbosacral trunk which form, gives the l4 l5 divisions as well as from s1 2 3 and 4 roots of the spinal cord you have to holistically visualize the entire pelvis has got too many muscles inside as well as too many muscles outside those are all supplied by the sacral plexus or the pelvic plexus for example the glottis glottis maximus minimus medius piriformis obturator externus internus the gamma ray superior inferior quadratus the names go on we get a little bit scary but if you holistically visualize the entire area you'll be able to remember the sacral plexus so the entire muscular anatomy is supplied the entire skin of that area most sensitive and erotic areas of the body are supplied by the sacral plexus we ought to know so what are the nerves of the sacral plexus first come the superior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal nerve these are the two nerves which supply the gluteal muscles which help you develop your glutes now latest fad worldwide is to tone up one's glutes you have to thank your gluteal nerves superior and inferior gluteal nerves for toning up your gluteal muscles superior and inferior gluteal nerves then comes the nerve to the piriformis a small muscle which is in the pelvis it comes out and uh, it is inserted into the posterior aspect of the femur a small twig called nerve to piriformis it gets frequently spasmed causing severe pelvic pain it has to be diagnosed and treated accordingly then come the two other nerves which supply the obturator internus and the inferior superior gammalus the quadratus femoris and the inferior gammalus it's very confusing the terminology so remember oski o s q i obturator internus and superior gammalus is one pair os ki quadratus femoris and inferior gammalus is another pair so the nerve to obturator internus supplies the superior gammalus the nerve to quadratus femoris supplies the inferior gammalus being pelvis there are too many nerves starting with p so if you remember four p's again you'll be able to complete the list the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve the perforating cutaneous nerve the posterior branch of the fourth sacral nerve and of course the pudendal nerve the pudendal nerve is the most important nerve of the pelvis it descends into the pelvic floor it supplies the entire pelvis it supplies the anal area perianal area perineum the muscles of the perineum the superficial muscles of the perineum the deep muscles of the perineum and ends by dividing into branches to the posterior scrotum the external genitalia of the males and females are supplied by the pudendal nerve the most important nerve of the pelvis then comes the last but not the least the largest nerve of the body the sciatic nerve or it's called sciatic nerve it's about 3 cm thick imagine now 3 cm thick thicker than this stethoscope it supplies the entire posterior compartment of the thigh and also the entire leg and foot as well in the form of its tibial and the peroneal components why one should know about the pelvic anatomy because these nerves sadly they are well preserved but they are the most injured and most irritated and most troubled nerves of the pelvis you will not see any individual without a pelvic pain or a sciatic pain nowadays sciatica low back pain one side and back pain both side back pain 
sitting like this for a long time causing back pain. That is a common scenario encountered. We don't make use of these nerves at all. The nerves purpose is to stimulate them. We irritate these nerves and finally we land up with irritated nerves causing so much of pain of the pelvis. A good physiatrist examines you and decides whether it is a muscle spasm, whether it is a ligament injury or whether it is a slip disc or whether it is a pure neuralgia and accordingly he prescribes maneuvers also. Yoga and stretching exercises are probably the best to prevent these type of pelvic pains. The pelvic dynia it's called. Most of us suffer from because we don't make use of the pelvic muscles for exercises. Yoga is a good proponent for pelvic stretching. One should make an attempt to do yoga, not at this age of 50 and all. You will land up more with pain. At the right time, right postures and right asanas have to be practiced. Thank you.